Hey everyone, Marty Snyder, Jeff Burton, Steve Letart joining you after Denny Hamlin's win at Pocono. Five late races left in the regular season, Steve. And boy, that cut line was like one or two points going into Pocono. Is it fair to say those guys above the cut line have a little more breathing room now? Well, separation, yes. Breathing room, maybe. Comfort, absolutely not. Uh, 17 points can can go away. Listen, it, it, Wallace and McDowell have done a nice job of gaining that separation, but they saw what happened to Suarez at Pocono, right? They know one bad restart, one bad move, one misstep. Uh, you're going to give up 20, 30 points. And the big challenge is it's not just a couple guys. There's a whole group of guys stacked in there. Yeah, there, there really is. And what I find what I find really interesting is the races that we have coming up. And when I look at Bubba Wallace, I'm concerned about it because there's two road course races in there. Then I look at everybody else. That's what I consider to be the guys that are that have a real shot to get in here. To probably stopping at Ty Gibbs, and they're all good road racers. And so that's going to put a ton of pressure on on Bubba having to find a way to be better on road courses because the competition is AJ Allmendinger. We know what he can do on road courses. He's only 17 points back. Suarez good on, on road courses. Gibbs good on road courses. So it this next five races is very unique in the races that we have coming up, and that will play a huge role in who can make it and who doesn't. That's a great point, Jeff. I was going to ask you guys to pick one driver below the cut line. So can I assume by what you said, A.J. Allmendinger is the guy you have your eye on below the cut line? That is a safe assumption. Uh, <laughs> the, you know, I, I, look, all these guys run very similar uh, on, on the racetracks that we're getting ready to go to outside of Daytona and the two road courses. At Daytona, anything can happen. Any of them could win. Any of them could get wrecked on the second lap. That's really a toss-up. What you need going to Daytona is separation. These next four races are what you are racing for. You have to assume you're going to be in a wreck at Daytona. If you go to Daytona and you're in a tight point battle, what do you do? Do you ride around the back, avoid the wreck? Do you get stage points? What do you do? You want to go to Daytona not having to worry about that. And the only way you can do that is to have a very successful both of your road course races, both of them, have to yield a great deal of points. Steve, who do you have your eye on below the cut line? Don't sleep on Ty Gibbs. This rookie year for the 54 is just a, just a nice step up each and every week. His decision-making continues to get better. Top five at Pocono. This is a driver that I saw made a lot of youthful mistakes, even with success in the Xfinity Series as a champ. Um, I saw some youthful mistakes early in the year. They're getting cleaned up. And he just seems very comfortable being a star, right, in and out of the race car. I just think Ty Gibbs has that swagger, has that big moment feel, that big moment swagger that he is going to enjoy. Plus, I think it's fair to say he has the least pressure. I don't think anyone says Ty Gibbs should be in the playoffs. If anyone does, then they're expecting more out of a rookie than I do. Um, the fact that he's even in the conversation is great. So I think Ty Gibbs is very dangerous when I look at the bubble. Steve, I was interested in what you said about in the pre-race about the guy in the picture over your left shoulder, Chase Elliott. I mean, you said he can win anywhere. You still feel comfortable saying that? I mean, I know the road courses really haven't been the old style Chase Elliott in this new car, but I do you agree there's still a threat at those races? Listen, I'll concede that Chase Elliott hasn't shown me winning speed, but I'll also challenge you to tell me that the fastest car is won every week because I don't think that's true. Um, the fastest car makes it easier to win. But if you count that guy out, if you count Chase Elliott out and Alan Gustafson and the power of Hendrick Motorsports, I think that's a major mistake. I would be shocked if he isn't in the picture. At a, and it's got to come where we don't expect it, right? He hasn't won at Richmond. Why not, right? A, a, a bazillion seconds in Michigan. Why not? Uh, maybe Daytona. Maybe he finally goes to Daytona and wins like Austin Dillon did a year ago. You know, I'm not saying he's going to. I'm just not on this bandwagon that says he can't. That is a, that is a not an accurate statement in my opinion they're going to have to be better than they've been and and i agree i, I agree with steve they are dangerous uh they're a team that you wouldn't think is in this spot uh but they're going to have to step up they're going to have to bring speed to the racetrack in the next four or five weeks that they have not brought on a consistent basis prior to now and and it's a difficult time to do this time of year is very hard because everybody is working hard to step it up uh, so if they are able to do it, it's going to be exceptionally impressive. I can guarantee you this. There's going to be a driver or a team that are better in the next four weeks than they've been in the in prior because we see it every year. Somebody, some team, they find a way to be better. There's going to be others that go the other way. 
and and Chase and that and, and Allen do it. They both have the talent, uh, but they have not been able to put it together so far this year. So there's one guy I want to talk about though, because I think Jeff and I agree that road courses are his challenge, but the approach would be very different for me. If I'm Booty Barker and I'm Bubba Wallace's crew chief, I'm not worrying about the road courses. I'm not making a road course racer in the next two weeks. We're not magically going to clap our hands and be good at the road courses. I would say we're going to finish the road courses. That would be my coaching. We're going to run every lap. We're going to finish and we're going to get what we get. And that's it. I'm the opposite. I would say Richmond and Michigan, we are better than Michael McDowell. We are better than Daniel Suarez. I would be on my driver and I would be setting the big stage. I know that seems crazy because Bubba Wallace has struggled a little bit finishing out Talladega and some qualifying runs. But it, you want to be a star, man. It's time to be a star. I would be putting it on his shoulder. And I would say, we're going to Richmond. We're going to Michigan. If you want to make the playoffs, earn your way in. Don't ho-hum. It didn't happen at the road courses. I would take a totally different approach with the uh, driver of the 23. So that's the cut line discussion real quick. I want to hear from both of you on the top of the heap and that's the regular season championship. You know, it's crazy to think two races ago it was the second closest in the history of the sport. And now all of a sudden Martin Trex Jr. has a 30 point lead. Is it his regular season title to lose Steve? Um, I'm not willing to concede that quite yet. I think the 24 is going to go look back at Pocono as a race that got away from him. I think they had race winning speed. What we are seeing is a, veteran champion battling against a rising superstar and it's going to be so much fun uh to see who executes i think they're both going to be so fast over the next five weeks it's going to come down to execution and i think we're getting ready to see a little bit of glimpse of what maybe that third round of the playoffs is going to look like i i think that big picture view that steve just talked about a rising star and a veteran i think that that is a really important perspective because this Regular season championship, we know how much it matters. We know the point benefit from doing it. But what we also know is putting William Byron in as many opportunities to fail and succeed is very important. So having him have that experience of racing for a regular season championship prior to the overall championship, all that does is keep putting a down, pause, down payment on a future success. Expose him to as many things as you can Get him in those battles. Let him lose some. Let him win some. It will make him better long term. These are experiences that put you in the position that Martin Truex is in now, that Kevin Harvick is in now, that Kyle Busch is in now. The only way you can do it is to be exposed to it. Hi, I'm Parker Kligerman. For more access like this from Pit Road, be sure to click and subscribe to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube channel.